we are here today to do something extremely exciting. Uh, we're going to talk about ETH Docker, um, or as the repo is called, ETH Docker. Um, and that is a product developed by our own Yorick Down uh, or Thurston Barons. Um, what is ETH Docker? Yeah. Um... It's really exciting if you're an Uber geek, otherwise maybe not so much. So ETH Docker is a way to run Ethereum clients and do that quickly and easily. Um, how did it come about in 2020, I think now, mid 2020, I became aware that Ethereum proof of stake was a thing. I became aware there was a Medasha testnet. I wanted to geek out because I was bored. So I looked at Somer Isat's guide. Um, that guide was excellent. I got it all up and running in two hours. And then I decided two hours is way too long. I'm not doing that again. I want this in something that takes under 10 minutes and that's a Docker. Uh, so what it does is it takes all the, all the little things you have to do, like I need this version of Go and I need a Java, et cetera. And as, as Docker does, it encapsulates all that. So it doesn't matter what's on your machine. It matters what's in what's known as a container, the, which you can think of as a very sophisticated zip file, which contains <laughs> absolutely everything the program needs to run. Okay. So that's, uh, I, I agreed to ask the dumb questions. I, I think you jumped ahead to tell us what Docker is. Um, right. What is, what is Docker? Like I, so I hear of Docker all the time. And I know that all of the cool people use it, but I yeah. don't know how to, what is Docker? So when you, when you come to this without knowledge, right? Um, the first thing you might think is, oh, Docker is too complicated for me, right? I'm not a programmer, but that's the same attitude people have towards the command line in general. Like I can't program, you know, I don't know who has to use Nano until you explain, Nano is a text editor just on text, not on, you know, there's no window as such, but it's a text editor, you know? So all the same things apply. Uh, and so the first thing I would say is don't be afraid of Docker. It's actually probably easier to get this going than it is to follow something like a SOMA guide. Um, although it will take you more effort to dig down because now it's up and running and you don't have any reason anymore to understand everything to the nth degree, right? So what is Docker? It is a tool that is designed to take a, um, what you might call a runtime environment, what I called earlier a sophisticated zip, right? Basically everything the program needs, grab it from something called Docker Hub or build it locally and then run it. So if I have a program like I have say Lighthouse, I get that all prepackaged, run that on my machine and all I need is any kind of Linux really and it is up and running. Um, it does use the Linux underneath. This is not a virtual machine. Uh, but as far as the as Lighthouse is concerned, it lives in its own little world. It doesn't see the rest of the machine. So, so, so a, a few background things about Docker. Um, there is a learning curve to Docker. If you've never used it before, it will feel frustrating for the first couple of hours. But the benefit, kind of like Thorsten said, once you get the basics of Docker, uh, it really opens up a lot of new possibilities that you didn't know existed before, uh, at which really means taking things like ETH Docker and spinning up um, a validator node in minutes with a few commands rather than a, a lot of instructions. And to make this easier, ETH Docker comes with a shell wrapper, something called FD. It's a little script that does all that for you. So while you can get smart about what is a Docker in the first place, you don't strictly speaking, have to. One of the things when I first learned Docker that was frustrating to me is not really knowing what was going on in the background. Like right. when I start a program, I like to see terminal output. Um, and Docker kind of abstracts all of that away. Are you going to show us ways that we can actually look inside that Docker container and know what's happening? Yes, I will. And this is very similar to running things in system D like you do with, um, with SOMAR's stuff, right? When you run it as a service in system D, like you follow a SOMAR ESAT guide, I'm going to shill that guy relentlessly um, <laughs> because I like his guides. Um, you don't see the output either until you type journal CTL, 
right? And then you get the logs. This is similar here, just in, instead of journal CTL, you type SD logs. So if you want to be closer to the, to the metal, you would type Docker compose logs, right? So it's, it's very similar in that way and how you interact with it. You can also interact with it if you just want to see it run. There's a run command. So you can just see it run and output to the screen right away. Of course, in that moment, the moment you stop the run, it's stopped again, right? The same way as if you did a lighthouse on the CLI directly instead of running it as a service in system D. And because we like things to be up for months without worrying about them, of course, we have them as a service, right? So you can think of this as very similar to the system D stuff, just more automated. Um, I would maintain easier to update, uh, you know, easier to not worry about what my build environment looks like. Like, oh, you Lighthouse didn't run? Yeah, you needed the new version of Rust, the what and the what now, right? So I don't, I don't have to worry about that anymore. That's all. That's all containerized for me, away, packaged, yeah. abstracted away, packaged in my uh, zip on steroids. That's a container. One of the one of the ways I want to help people conceptualize what Docker is, is um, you probably run a lot of your systems now as system services. And, and people may be familiar with setting up system services. That's how um, Samaras and CoinCashew's guide, they show you how to set up system services. When you're running under Docker, um, you're no longer using system services. Um, Docker has its own upstart. And so uh, when you're choosing how to set up your node, you're really going to choose either a system service or Docker. You're not going to use both. They, while they don't do all of the same things, when it comes to running a node, you can essentially think of it as an either or because in that case, they provide the same service. Correct. Okay. So um, I have a little bit of a documentation site. I'd start sharing and maybe we would just look at a picture first and then we can go into, okay, how do you spin it actually up and uh, have questions along the way. How's that sound? Love it. All right. Yeah, start sharing the entire screen. I will no doubt, um, let me just see. Uh, hide floating oh, meeting controls, like that this. sounds good. That can go. Okay, so we can see this okay. So this is at ethdocker.net, which has all kinds of documentation. It starts with this overview here, right? Um, so there's your Linux server, the same thing that you would always use, whatever that is, that can be a physical machine in your home, right? That's what it should be, or it could be a VPS in the cloud. Then inside this is a Docker Compose stack, and we'll show you how to do that. And that runs a consensus client like a lighthouse or a Nimbus or whatever, and an execution client like a Geth or an Aragon or a Besu or a Nethermind, a validator client. Um, in Earth Docker, that is typically the same as the same team as the consensus client. I haven't gone crazy here. While you can theoretically mix and match these, we don't. Um, a reporting package, which is optional, like a Grafana Prometheus. And then of course you need keys um, in production, these keys would be generated outside in an air-gapped machine. And then you would deposit against them on Launchpad and then bring them in to your validator client by bringing them over to your Linux machine and importing them. So this, is, this should all feel pretty familiar. This is the same components that you have um, whenever you run an Ethereum node, right? Um, there are components in ETHDocker that go deeper than what we've shown here and that we will probably not get into. Um, such as it can actually build the clients from source if that is so desired. That's by design. So it, it's good for testing. If you need to build a client from source, you have something you want to try in their current development branch. If Docker supports that, there's a little file called um, source. There's two variables. One is source target, and I think the other one is Docker file. So instead of Docker file binary, it would be Docker file source, and then set the source target and do a Docker Compose build, and it will compile from source, right? Um, fully supported in this thing. Uh, it can also be used to run RPC nodes. Um, I'm actually doing that for my own business. I'm using this thing to, to run API RPC nodes that do not validate. 